This review is brought to you by DwayneWright.com, FileMaker Framework Solutions, virtual one-on-one FileMaker training, consulting, and custom design services. For more information, please visit www.DwayneWright.com. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne, and this is the third in a series of videos that we're doing on passing data from one script to another. In a previous movie, we did talk about using the global field method. We talked about using a script parameter method, which is one way of pushing data from one script to another. We talked about using script results, which is one way of pulling data from one script to another. And now we're going to talk about the scripted variables. So if we take a look, Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and pull up. The technique that I used is uses elements from both the global and the parameter method, but you didn't have to do it that way. So let's go ahead and pull up. This is the old field method that we showed in a movie number one. And here's the parameter, or excuse me, the variable method. Now, yeah, I could have just combined all these into one variable, but the reason that I did that was for illustration. Normally, you'd have multiple variables to do different tasks, and then you pass those in a batch. So, and then when I did these variables, I set them as globals, global variables, which means they're persistent through the entire file until they're cleared out. You wouldn't really have to do it that way. Uh, you could set these as local variables because when I perform the script, when I set these variables up in memory, I am passing them to the second script via a parameter. So this is probably not the, the best way. What you'd normally do if you're going to use a parameter, you could just use local variables and then you know that they're cleared out at the end of the script. If you use global variables, when you perform script B, you don't even have to use a parameter at all as long as you're in the same file. Uh, it would pull across. But in a technique where you're going to send it to another file, you'd want to use a parameter because variables don't work between files, parameters do. Uh, so, and then in script B, what I'm doing is showing the parameter as the result. But this could, as well, just have those global variables that we defined. In fact, let's go ahead and do a live edit. We'll go ahead and duplicate that script step. And in here, we'll just do... So we'll just kind of kick it old school on this one and we'll also show a dialog box that comes up and just shows you the uh, the concatenated variables. So now I'm showing you ver uh, the, the script global script variable A going ahead and putting in a space variable B space and C. Go ahead and perform that. And now here we're down here, we also have got our data viewer. So we're going to see data as it goes across. So we'll perform that script. You can see that now I'm going to set a global field, this message. And you can see it shows up in our data viewer. So it's data that's up in memory. A little more up in memory, a little more up in memory. Now I'm going to perform script B, step into, you can see in our call stack that we, we do have our parameter going across. We are in step B. There's our dialog box. This message uses script variables. And we'll go ahead and perform the next show custom. And you can see that it also, instead of using the parameter, it uses the variables, the global variables themselves, and comes across. And then as part of a house cleaning effort for my global variables, I'm clearing them out again. And you can see them go away. Now, let's bring up script A. You could have multiple set variable script steps going on inside of here. Uh, but there is a way that you can declare multiple script variables within just a script variable. So we're going to show that technique next. Sometimes I like to have multiple script variables because it's sort of like little milestones in the script as I'm reading it going down and get an idea of what's going on. But let's go ahead and jump on over to this technique. 
And here you can see in script A, we have just one variable, and then we're calling script B, and we're using the, the same parameter situation as we did previously. But when I fire the script up via the debugger, I'm going to call one script variable, and watch what happens down here in the data viewer. They're all declared in one script variable step, <clears throat> and then it performs the other script. So if we take a quick look at that, oops, not the message, let's take a look at our variable. And what we're doing is we're using the let function. The let function is typically designed so that within your calculation you can say, I'm naming this thing and I'm setting it to this value. I'm naming another thing and I'm setting it to this value. I'm naming another thing and I'm setting it to this value. You can do this on and on. And at the end, your final calculation uses the things you named. So that helps you keep from having one really big long script. You can bring it down into minor little chunks by just naming them and setting up smaller calcs. Now as you're naming things, you can name them global variables with the double dollar sign. So that acts just like setting a uh, script variable script step. So my let function is saying, this thing I'm going to name, I'm going to go ahead, that name by the way is a global variable because I use two dollar signs. Now I do it again, and I do it again. And then this is kind of janky, but uh, kind of cool. Cool but janky. Uh, normally in your let function, that, that last calculation would use the variables you declared, you know, because that's the whole point. Um, I don't care, because I'm not really wanting to calculate anything. I'm just wanting to declare a bunch of variables in a batch. So my let function, I'm just declaring the names of the variables as global variables, and then I'm in a batch load, they're up in memory. And this is nice because, again, it uses less script steps. You can have more of a text result in your variables. You can comment better. And, of course, it's easier to clear them out when they're done. And you can see in script B, again, I set all those variables to be empty again using the same method. So that's script variables, two different ways to do it. One is by just using regular script variables. We talked about some of the different ways you could go with them. And then we showed one way of declaring multiple script variables by using the let function. So in recap, we showed you how to pass data using globals, parameters, script results, and script variables. Do you have questions or comments about the video you just saw? Please feel free to email me at info at DwayneWright.com. Thank you.